Hey, it's Brent from the White Lab Workshop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I made this corridor game out of materials I picked up from my local big box store. Let's go have some fun. For this project, we used oak boards that were half inch thick and five and a half inches wide. I had some leftover from my wine bottle gift box build that just happened to be a good length. If you're starting with a fresh board, cut two pieces a little longer than 11 inches to give yourself a little wiggle room during the glue up. My shop buddy for the day helped me glue the pieces together to make the main board. If you want to make this game for yourself, I've got more detailed instructions, including cut lists, on my website, whitelabworkshop.com. When clamping them together, it's a good idea to wrap some packing tape or plastic around some 1x2s to make calls. Then you can clamp the calls to the work table to keep the game board pieces from buckling under the clamping pressure from the sides. Just make sure you don't clamp the boards together a little too aggressively. Once the glue dries, cut your game board to 11 inches long. I use the width of the board to put a stop block on my crosscut sled, then use my table saw to make the cut. You can easily do this with a miter saw or even a hand saw. This is where you clean up any minor variations in the glue up to make your board square. After squaring up the board, it's a good idea to sand it before you have a bunch of dados on there to try and catch your sandpaper. I mean, come on, who doesn't love to sand? To cut the dados, I used a dado stack on my table saw. This is by far the easiest way to do it, but you can get creative if you don't have a dado stack at your disposal. There's lots of videos out there on the YouTubes with ideas on how to cut dados without a dado stack with lots of different tools. But since I do have a dado stack, I'm going to use it. For the walls, I use quarter inch poplar left over from my wine bottle gift box build. The grid we need to make is 9 by 9. With an 11 inch by 11 inch board and quarter inch dados for the walls, that leaves exactly 1 inch or 2.54 centimeters for each space in the grid. I like nice and easy numbers. Well, nice and easy numbers for you Americans making this. For the rest of the world, with your much more logical measuring system, you don't get numbers as nice and easy to remember as one inch for this build. I positioned the fence, then made a cut for each of the four sides. After each row, move the fence over an inch and a quarter, then go around the horn again. With the dados cut for the spaces, it's time to swap the dado stack back for my regular blade. The walls are next. I cut mine two and a quarter inches wide to cover two spaces perfectly. I'd actually recommend cutting them a little less than that, and I'll show you why later on. Cut several rows, because we'll be turning them and cutting the individual walls out next. I 
cut each wall about one inch wide, which makes for good height on the board when in position. I kept cutting until I ran out of material, then went on to the next one. In the end, you'll need 20 wall pieces, then any extra you want to have around handy. We always lose stuff around here, so I always cut extras. Look at that defense perfection. For the pawns, I used an offcut of the board during the square off step. I cut four pieces at half inch wide and about an inch tall. If you want to keep it simple, you can stop here and have a nice game board on your hands. But I wanted to add a frame to the outside of my board. So I grabbed some extra oak 1x4 and started sizing the first cut to the width of the board. Once cut to length, I ripped the 1x4 right down the center to give me two end frame pieces. On the end frame pieces, I wanted to cut dados for the wall pieces to stand in for each player's side. Here you can see me fumbling around trying to find the center then trying to figure out what spacing I wanted. I cut my slots at 45 degree angles. Hindsight being 2020 and all, I don't think that was worth the hassle. I'd cut them straight next time. The wall pieces would slightly hang off the back, but that's fine. During this little cluster portion of the project, I messed up twice. I cut nine slots, when I later learned that there's supposed to be 10 walls for each player. And I tried to be smart about where the outsides of the dados landed, but ended up messing up the spacing of the last slot for both end pieces. Straight slots wouldn't take up so much room, so it'd be easier to space them out. To cut the 45 degree dados, I used my guide with a sacrificial fence screwed onto it. This worked pretty well. I figured I didn't need perfection, so I just eyeballed the cuts against my lines and managed to do a decent job other than the ends being spaced out too closely. But I blame that on my poor planning. Next, I set up my board on the crosscut sled to measure out the length for the next sides. I deliberately cut them a little long, so I had more fudge factor to work with during the glue up.
I eased the edges and the corners with some sandpaper, and I highly recommend doing this. It just feels so much better without the sharp edges. This is a game after all, not a punishment. It's time to glue the frame together. I use calls to hold the frame down during the clamp up. You may be able to do all four sides at once, but I did my glue up in two rounds, and you'll see why in a moment. This is why. I wanted to clean up the fit by cutting a hair off either side on the table saw. This is also the reason why I would cut my walls slightly shorter if I were to do this again. The clean edge made for a real nice glue up surface, but now the walls don't fit very well when positioned perpendicular to these frame pieces on the outsides. Cutting the walls a touch shorter would give the best of both worlds. Then glue up the final frame pieces. Again, I took mine to the table saw to clean up the outside edges. And since I love sanding so much, I sanded the frame pieces and eased the edges. My shop buddy was back to help me apply the finish. We used tongue oil because I think it gives a nice appearance. You can use whatever finish you want. I will say that getting finish into all the dados was a frustrating process. Using something that soaks in, like tongue oil, is a good idea just so you don't have to come back later and try to wipe it out of the dados again. To make one of the pawns look differently, I tried to apply the same stain I used for the octagon shelf build. Turns out the oak didn't take it very well, but it gave the appearance enough of a difference to do the trick. Here's the finished product. Pretty nice. Alright, bring it girl. The only thing left to do is play. Here's the rules. Each player gets one pawn and ten walls. The first pawn to reach the other side wins. For every turn, players can either move their pawn or place a wall, which must cover two spaces. Pawns can't jump over walls, and walls can't prevent a pawn from getting to the other side. Don't let the simple rules fool you though, there's a lot of strategy in play.
<laughs> okay, now I have to move mine because there's no way I can. I think. I think I can be smart. I knew you were gonna go there. <laughs> I know for a fact that you're gonna go there. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna go like that, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Just follow the corridor. Oh. <laughs> I know you're gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, why am I going that way? Well, you 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 can oh! it. <laughs> Now look at this. If I don't even use my walls, it's a race to the end. Who gets there first? Please don't use your walls. Hold on, you have to wait until I go. No! <laughs> this game is a lot of fun to make and even more fun to play. I made some mistakes, but it just wouldn't be a White Lab Workshop project if I hadn't. If you like this video, consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel. We've got a lot more woodworking projects queued up and we'd love to share them with you. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time.